So uh, we're going to continue from where we left off in the last video is that I was just at the cups of introducing introducing the applicative functor and um, before you get into uh, into the idea of the applicative functor let's just let's just quickly go back to a Haskell shell here let's just go to a Haskell shell here and what I've done here is um, at first I first done an import but I've imported the the control dot applicative module and I'm just running an info on applicative and when I run an info on applicative I get the type class definition of the applicative functor in in uh, in Haskell and I can see the the type class definition of the applicative functor in Haskell that um, that these are the, the following type of signatures that must be implemented if you were to make an instance of the applicative functor and um, what we're going to do is we're going to look in particular in particular to the, 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 the two methods here which is the pure which is a pure and the one uh, just after pure where you have these angle bracket star angle bracket closing. So I'm just going to copy paste I'm just going to copy paste the first two lines here from my from my Haskell's uh, shell and um, Let's just move back to a blackboard and we're just going to paste this uh, Paste this right here so that we can start using this idea To see how this is going to help us complete this problem Okay, so last in the last video we just stopped off at this point where I knew that the type, the type of using an F map, this entire orange box here, this entire orange box here had a type of IO of string to a string. I had a function that would take in a string and give you back a string was completely wrapped in an IO module. Okay, so now what what this what this what this gives me is that if if this F that I'm dealing with right whatever this f that i'm dealing with if it's a functor if this f is a functor meaning i know that my io is a functor and also if this io is an applicative functor okay io is also an applicative functor so knowing that io is a functor and knowing that io is an applicative functor as well it means that i can actually actually use the second method the second method that is that is that is that is available to me so I'm just going to rewrite this method. I'm just going to rewrite the type signature for this method by replacing F with an IO. Now remember, I can only do this because I know that IO, I know that IO is an instance of the applicative functor. In the last video, we saw that IO was already an instance of, of my, of my uh, uh, functor. And now uh, IO, I'm telling you IO is also an instance of my applicative functor. And um, maybe one way to do that is you could also um, open up Google here so if I were to open up Google here and um, if I were to quickly, quickly look up the I.O. module here and um, let's look at the I.O. module here and uh, one of the things that I can see at least in this video here is, uh, is uh, if I can just maybe bring my, okay, there you go, this is a little bit better. And um, what I can see here is that the I.O. monad, the I.O. monad, in Haskell is basically an instances instances of the of the monad. The IO is an instance of the monad type class. IO is an instance of the functors type class. IO is an instance of the monad fixed type class. And IO is also an instance of the applicative applicative type class. Okay, applicative functors type class. So knowing that information, if I move back to my Blackboard. I'm just going to replace. I'm just going to replace everywhere I see an F with an I O. So I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this as uh, F. I'm replacing that with an I O. I know A in this case is acting as a string. Okay, B is acting as a string from my last video. We saw that in the last video where A and B, A and B is acting acting as a string, and um, so. Uh, this further f over here is going to be an io of string and this is going to give you back io io of string okay so what i have now is this idea that uh, f map plus plus get line has this entire type it has a type where uh, the type is IO of string and string, which is completely the very first argument, is the very first argument to my to my method over here. Okay, so I can take I can I can just basically I can just basically rewrite this rewrite this as uh, as follows. 
I can rewrite this as um, as uh, doing doing the follow the following thing. I can say I can say f map. I'm just going to rewrite what I had earlier. I'm going to say f map f map plus plus get line. Okay, and I'm going to follow this up. I'm going to follow this up with the with the method in the applicative functors type class where I'm going to say angle bracket star angle bracket close. Okay, I'm providing in the very first argument that the applicative functor needs, which is this entire piece here. And then I'm going to follow that up. I'm going to follow that up with an IO string. And that IO string is going to come from, from get line. Okay, so this is one another way. This is one another way of doing the same problem of concatenating two, two IO strings together. And I'm not using the imperative style of programming here, but I'm actually making use of my of my knowledge that IO is an instance of the functors type class and IO is an instance of the applicative functors type class as well. So let's just try this problem out. Let's just try this problem out in the in the on the Haskell shell here. So I have my Haskell's Haskell shell here and I'm going to say I'm going to say okay let's have let let's 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 have something called concatenate concatenate defined here. That's my concatenate and um, I'm going to say concatenate equals to equals to I'm going to first make use of my of my f map I'm going to pass in plus plus and then I'm going to say I have this impure value which is get line which is an IO string and um, this in turn gives me back something the type of f map plus plus get line is going to be something of type IO of string to a string Okay, so let's just try the first thing out. If I if I have this thing here, and if I just do a type, if I just do a type on concatenate, the way it is presently, concatenate, I can see I can see that the type of concatenate is that there's this method that takes in a string or a list of char and gives it back a list of char here. Okay, so plus 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 has been partially applied. Okay, plus plus. If I look at a type on plus plus here, okay, it's a type. That basically, in this case, uh, it just takes in a list of a list of a's over here, okay, and it takes in another list of a's over here, and it concatenates concatenates them together to give you back a list of a's here. But in this case, plus plus has been partially applied partially applied on the on the string of this monadic expression get line, okay. So again, if I were to just show you this a little bit more a little bit more with clarity. Let me just use my doodling at this point. So I can see that this get line, this entire get line is of type IO string. Okay, and this plus plus over here, the type of plus plus is this piece right, right there. Okay, that's the signature of, of, of my plus plus. And what has happened is what fmap has done here is it has taken this monadic expression IO string, okay, because the type of fmap, the type of fmap, the type of fmap, is basically it takes in a method that goes from A to B and it takes in a functor value f of A and gives you back f of B, another functor value fb. So replacing my f's with my io here, the type of f map could be also written as A to B and then this f can be replaced with an io of A and this could be I O of B. And I know my A and B in this case is acting as a list of char or list of strings. But what has happened here is that my method, my method over here, which goes from A to B, or in other words, uh, this method, if I were to just be consistent with my plus plus here, is a method that basically goes from A to A to A. Okay, or in other words, let's just make it a little bit more simpler by actually using the string, the string type. It takes in a string or a list of char and it takes in another string and gives you back gives you back a string okay and just applying current here i can see that this is this is what the, what is the actual method this is what actually plus plus says but if i were to apply plus plus partially meaning if i were to just given one string if i were to just given one string here what i'm going to get back in return is this is this entire piece over here which is this b this 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 piece b here which is a function that takes in a string and a string this is just 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 current, right? And just something current here. So what I get back in return is this I O of B, where I O of string to string. This is the output. This is the output that I get back from from my F map. And we can see that this is very, very consistent. This is very, very consistent with what I've got back 
from my Haskell's inference inference engine. So my Haskell's inference engine tells me that the type of concatenate is basically an I/O. Uh, it's basically this monadic expression, or I shouldn't be using the word monadic here because I'm trying to I'm trying to use this as a functor. So I have this functor value. I have this functor value here where this method that takes in a string and gives you back a string has been wrapped inside inside I/O. Okay, so given this given this idea here, given this idea, here, let's just complete a concatenate now. And uh, to, in order to complete the concatenate, I'm just going to revisit my um, my let binding here, and I'm going to now apply I'm now going to apply the applicative functor on on get line. Okay, so what's the type of concatenate? Concatenate the type of this concatenate now should be an I/O of string here. Okay, that's the type. This is the type of my of my of my of my concatenate. So the type of this concatenate is basically an IO of string. Okay, that's after applying after applying my applicative functor. Okay, after applying the applicative functor, and if I were to run this, if I were to run this thing, if I just put run this code here, I can say concatenate concatenate, and uh, let's pass in a pass, and then let's pass in academy. And um, I should get back. I should get back the concatenation of a pass and academy. And again, remember what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get these get these strings from my impure from my from from the outside world, right? I perform some I/O. This is a point where I performed some some I/O operation here. And once I perform these these I/O operations here, I was able to able to able to tear it apart where I could get the string out from the from the functor and um, take the string and concatenate them to, to, to each other. And now again, you might notice that, okay, this code is a little bit more verbose and um, it looks a little bit more, I don't know, maybe some might argue that, uh, is there a cleaner, cleaner approach of, uh, of instead of using the prefix notation of fmap here. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a prefix notation of the fmap method. This piece over here is my prefix, is my prefix notation of my of my fmap method and maybe it might be nice if i could actually replace that prefix notation by using maybe some kind some kind of an infix some kind of an infix notation and there actually is an infix notation for the fmap method which is the angle bracket dollar and um, let's just use that over here so i'm just going to i'm just going to go back to my concatenate binding and i'm just going to get rid of this uh, prefix notation of fmap but now replace that with an infix notation and uh, it's exactly the same thing. So if I do concatenate and now pass in a pass academy and I should get back the concatenation, concatenation of the two things. Okay. So this was the second style, the second style of using using the same same example. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to revisit the problem and I'm going to show you the third style of using the lift method.